Bourbon. Hi everyone, this is Board Games and Bourbon. I'm Glenn Flaherty, and right now I want to talk about King's Forge, which is a new game by Starling Games. And in this game, you are getting raw elements and you are trying to forge them into uh, more precious things. Now, over the course of the game, what you're trying to do is you're trying to build the most of these items here using kind of like these markets and using these raw elements to do so. And uh, you go until you build four items. I think if you play in two players, you have to build five. Now, this game, I will tell you, uh, I consider part of a trio of games that are very similar, or at least have a similar thread running through them. And that would be King's Forge, which is, you know, kind of the dice manipulation deal. And then Marco Polo, which again, you put down dice and things happen. And then a newer one called Quimbra. Now, they're not all by the same designer, but there is a common thread. And they're, they're graduated by complexity, I would say. But each one, I believe, exists side by side. They all have their own place. This one in particular earns its spot because of its swift play and its expanding modules. Now, on this one here, I have a gold module that not only comes with gold dye that serve as wilds, but also comes with these things called royal decrees. And you can use as many as you want, honestly. But what they do is they give a starting condition to the gameplay. So what that means is you have a lot of variability. You know, when we put out these items we're trying to build, there is a massive pile of cards you can build. Right here of these little, you know, let's say forges markets you're trying to go to, there's a big stack there, and then you had the royal decrees. So there's a lot of combinations there that you can run through. Okay, so now let's talk about how we set up the game. So when you do the game, what you're going to do is you're going to take a bunch of the items that you're trying to make, and you're going to put them in numerical order. I don't know if you can see this, but it goes 43, 57, and then 64, and then the top also runs through uh, the order in which you're trying to do it. So for example, let's take a look here. We'll start with uh, this middle card here. And this one here is called Dice of Deceit. Let's see if we can get that focused on there. Okay, Dice of Deceit. Now in Dice of Deceit, what it's saying is you need to roll two greens and a blue. The two greens have to be at least a number two die and the blue has to be a number four. Okay, so we, we know we have to build this. Now when you're playing the game, you kind of have to forecast what you're going to need. And you don't start with those resources because as the game goes on, you're going to find out through the setup that you start with these five metal dies, kind of like this very neutral color. You're trying to convert them into these other raw materials. Further on about the setup, you have those items. Then what you do is you have the stack of the places you're building, and then you kind of have like these permanent buildings down here, places you're going to play your die. Each of these cards have kind of two different types of spots. There are white spots that are purely white. And what's a good example? I'll grab this one and bring it up. Now on this one here, when we look here, you'll see that there's a top power and a bottom power. And the top power uh, says copy a gather card ability. Uh, and gather card is kind of like when you're trying to figure out what to do with your dice. Uh, used in a previous turn and pay its cost, okay? And then the bottom one has an X over one of the squares, and it says if you put two dice here, you can get a green die, and immediately you can put it in your hand. Well, when you visit either the permanent locations or one of these cards, you can either choose the top or the bottom, okay? And uh, if you put something on the X, you lose that die. Now, if I play something here, at the end of the turn, I'd get my die back. Here, on the bottom, I have to place two die. One of them would come back, but one of them would get lost. So it's pretty important to uh, you know decide what you're putting, where you're putting it, and think about why you're doing it. Okay, so now we have that. Down here on our personal playing area, this is the, uh, I love this little first player marker, this little forge thing's really cool. The original version of the game had like a big wooden one. This is actually something I prefer. This little card here is for you. This is where you're going to put your items once you complete them. You're going to put your die beside it. And then you're going to have these little player aids, which I really appreciate. It explains the symbols. You know, it tells you what the dice are. Metal, wood, gem, magic, library, and cemetery. I love that wood is green. You know, because wood is uh, green. And then you have these symbols on the back, okay, that kind of explain it to you. So what's going to happen on your turn? Well, 
what you know you're going to pl pass the uh, first player token back and forth and then you're going to take your die and you're going to decide what you're going to do so i might say to myself well okay uh this here copying a previous card doesn't really help me because the game hasn't even started but i know that i can at least try to build this number two and number three card it's called the fireworks well to me uh I think the most useful die in the game is going to be gold because it's wild. So I'm going to go over here to this card, ba-boom, the gold mine. And it says here, if I place down two die, okay, that I will get the gold right now. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it over here. It's not available for me to roll, but I've put two die down and now I've built it. Now, when you use one of these lower conditions, uh, what that means is one of these upper conditions have to go away. So I'm just going to take something called the wishing well away because this says here, you know, you can roll a die and put it in your hand or you can roll a die and add one or two. I'm just going to take that away. Okay, that's off the board. The good thing is when something goes off the board, you replace it right away. Oh, something called the garden. That looks really cool. The top power is roll a higher, a uh, roll a die. If four or higher, you get a green. And on the bottom, you put either a red or a blue die here, and it will give you a green or a plus two to a card. That's really good if you get stuck. Okay, so this player took their turn, and they got a, a gold die. Now let's say it's this other player's turn. So what they're going to do is they're going to take uh, one die, and they're going to put it here. Now, you can see that there's an X. And when you put it here, you get a gray coin. And if we examine the gray coin, what it says is you get two, it says plus one and plus one. If I were to put it down here, where it says two dice go or three dice go, you get a coin that gives you an automatic six on a roll. Well, if I'm going for that, it really won't matter. So I can do what I can. So I put that, I have my uh, gold, I did this, and I have three die left. It'd be really good if I could find a way to get more die. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it right there uh, into the docks for metal and wood. It says put anything, you're gonna lose it, and you're gonna get a green. So I'm gonna do that. I got myself green, that'll help me in the future. And then something will go, uh, let's just say South Mine will go. It doesn't look important. Put two die down, get two black out. I don't need that right now. Okay, the cemetery comes out. That's an interesting one. No one ever uses that when I play because it kills a die. It might even kill your die. So that's a real long shot, kind of like at the end. Okay, so now this person still doesn't have anything. Uh, they're, they're in a little bit of a sticky wicket. They don't have a lot of choices here. Maybe they'll go for a blue. But the blue is going to take four uh, die uh, to get it. Wow, that's really not very good. Well, okay, so they're going to take two die. They're going to take this card. Now, this is interesting. This is one of the first time we're using one of the top ones. When you take a top card and you put it into your personal area, make sure to spin the center pile. That always makes the game more interesting. So the workshop, the workshop's in your personal area. And you're going to put two down here. And that gives me a green instantly to use. So actually, this person dropped two, but has the green available, whereas I do not have it available. These stay in your area so you can keep it straight, what you're doing. And you're basically going to you know, keep pulling cards and doing this until you use up all the cards or you use up all your die or everyone passes. Okay. Now, once you do that, you're going to go ahead and roll your die. So I'll go ahead and roll. Uh, I got one and one. Not good enough to satisfy anything there. That is a real stinker, okay? And I'm just gonna do, um, I'm gonna roll my die, which which really doesn't really matter because I don't even have the blue, but let's just pretend. I'm gonna roll, and I did get a four. That would, that would qualify, but my two gray doesn't because it's not the right color. But let's pretend I did have the right color. And I rolled these two. Well, what I could say is, ah, okay, I rolled it. This is mine. I claim this card now. There is the chance to steal cards from other people, so you can mess them up. You know, a lot of the times people, because they're easier to build, are going to be fighting over the same cards, especially early in the game. Maybe later in the game, you know, you, some cards are similar, so you might have the same die. So the way you can beat somebody else out is, if I were to roll, I would have to beat their roll. Now this person has a six blue and a four green. I would have to roll at least one higher. So if I would roll a six blue and a five green, I can therefore steal that card from them and put it in my pile. And that's one card 
towards the four or five I need, depending on player count. And that's really all there is to the game. You're manipulating your die. You're choosing what you're going for. Uh, overall, the game is pretty straightforward. I think it's one of the better social games. I think this, the dice manipulation is really cool in general. I'm, it's a genre that I'm really enjoying more and more. I think it's a very colorful game, and it looks nice on the table. This uh, very busy uh, scene of the world you're living in is a nice backdrop to the game as well. In earlier versions, I believe it was just straight cards, but the fact that you have that backdrop really adds something. The wild also, uh, the gold, uh, really gets you out of a sticky wicket a lot of time. I'm really happy about that introduction. There's more versions of this coming out. There's one called Masterworks that I think is uh, either out right now or coming out soon. And um, it seems like every iteration actually adds something worth its weight, something that is truly interesting to put into your game. So if you're looking for, you know, I wouldn't say this is a introductory game. You know, I wouldn't put it in the pantheon of, um, oh, I don't know, King of Tokyo or something like that. Maybe I would put this in King of Tokyo land, you know, maybe a little bit above that, but it has a different mechanic. You know, I'm not going to say this is a, a carcassonne. This definitely has a lot more uh, thinking going on from that and much more interaction. But the mechanic itself, I think, separates it from the crowd and occupies its own space. So once again, that game is King's Forge. I encourage you to check it out. See if it's for you. You know, if you haven't played Marco Polo or Co uh, Coimbra, uh, this would be a good way for you to step into that world, okay? Well, thank you all very much. I'll talk to you soon, and happy holidays. Bye.